All right. Uh, sorry for the late video, but after the eclipse, I had company, and after they left, I actually skipped a day of work, so I had to make that up. So I'm just now having one day off and having to clean, because Monday is usually my clean day, but that was eclipse day last week, so I had double corners to dig out this week so I'm just now kicking off what I call my short day at work my Wednesdays uh, which is Thursday now because I work at night um, so I'm just now getting around to doing this and there's quite a bit I want to cover but I'm going to back up and punt here for a second and talk about the eclipse because it was quite incredible really it's one of those, you had to be there to see it, to believe it. Um, it was quite an experience, I must say. Uh, we had a great time. Quite a few people showed up. Um, it was one of those experiences that there just really aren't words to describe. Uh, I would place it in events in my life that was second only to opening my third eye as a child. It was an extremely uh, magical, mystical, spiritual, uh, there really are words in, in the human language to describe what we experienced that day. I'm still gathering together photos. Uh, there are videos as well. And in the next few weeks, I'm going to try to put all that together for you. Uh, those of you that were there, if you did have um, photos or videos, uh, please send them to me on my email. Uh, I appreciate everyone that came. We had a really, really excellent experience. <clears throat> we went to a very secluded place up on top of Winding Stair which is symbolic of the ladder or the air sign while wit uh, with our feet on the earth while witnessing uh, the battle of fire and ice in the sky, water and fire, the sun and the moon. I have to say, I had to work the night before and the day before the eclipse, I had to prep everything so we would have refreshments and I was I was a bit suffering from sleep deprivation but as the eclipse occurred I started noticing this what I it, it looked like an ocean of light little waves of light that just covered the ground and it was quite incredible I thought I was hallucinating because I had been awake for so long so I started blinking my eyes and um, ask if anybody else sees the waves. And yes, I was not the only one that saw the waves. A lot of people saw the waves. And it, was, it reminded me of when I opened my third eye. Because light emitted from everything. And it was like when the moon blocked out the sun, you could see the light coming from the ground, is what it appeared. It was like almost knee deep, um, and it was in just really a soft wave form. It was quite incredible. It was a blue-white light that would remind one of water. It was actually magnificent. Everybody there had almost a mystical experience that's hard to describe. Uh, uh, there were a few other people there where we were at, but it was not overcrowded like a lot of places were. Uh, we picked some place very secluded, uh, and afterwards we left and went to Three Sticks. But the real magic happened the next day when 
we all gathered at the community center there in Tallahena. And I have to say, I was quite impressed. Uh, it went very well. Uh, we do have some videos, and I'll be working with that this week to see just what we can salvage from some of it, because we weren't prepared. Uh, now, I am. It went so well, actually, that I am making arrangements for us to do this again. Unfortunately, I can't schedule an eclipse to happen, but I can do the next best thing. And um, I'm trying to make arrangements. Please do not go book anything. Rooms, flights, days off, nothing. Until I get this nailed down. Um, but um, I'm shooting for the powwow on Labor Day weekend. It's in the next town over in Tuscahoma from Tallahena. It's kind of like a Choctaw festival. They're going to have... They always have like a little carnival and stuff to do for the kids. It's generally free. And um, I'll get on. So it'll kind of, it can be a family affair. And it'll be a three-day weekend to where the powwow is generally going to happen on the first. Actually, it would kind of be all weekend. But I'm trying to nail down the community center for two days. Uh, and I will keep you updated on this this week. I'm going to try to get everything nailed down this week. One, so you can have more time to prepare. Uh, so that more of you can come. And it won't be on a work day. It will be on that three day weekend. And uh, you'll actually get to experience something uh, from the Choctaw traditions. And a lot of you that were there made friends locally. And uh, so now you'll have somebody to visit and something to do. And you'll have a better idea of where you're at. I will also add any information I can think of that might help you. But again, this has kind of got to be a family affair. Now, I do want to throw this out there about pets. I had to bring Kelly with me to the eclipse uh, because she's not doing well. She's what I call in her hospice stage. I have put her on Kratom. So I wanted to keep an eye on her. But on that Tuesday, our, uh, at the community center, Kelly does really well with other people, but she doesn't do so well with animals these days. So I decided to just give her her kratom and leave her at home. Uh, we had bad thunderstorms scheduled for that day, and a lot of you brought your own pets with you. Uh, and everybody seemed to get along, but Kelly, she gets overexcited about everything, and she comes off as aggressive. It's not that she doesn't get along with other animals. It, she has no social skills. She doesn't know how to make friends with other animals. And she's pushy. And it does come off as dominant and aggressive. And other animals do not respond well to her. But I left her at home because I didn't want you guys to have to leave your pets in the, in the community. I mean, in their, your cars during a thunderstorm because a lot of you had already checked out. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that next time. Uh, more than likely, we're checking into it to see what we can do. But I do believe we lost our deposit on the community center because of the dogs. Uh, I think the ladies probably had to go back in behind us and sweep that whole area uh, for the dog hair. So I don't know if they're going to let us do that again. So a little heads up on pets that, um, and I'll also check to see about pets at the powwow event itself. Because I'm a dog person. I get it. You, they're your babies. You want to take them everywhere. Uh, unlike cats who can be pretty independent and you don't mind leaving them alone for a day or so. So, uh, we'll get into all of that later in the week. 
but definitely this has to happen again uh, because it was quite incredible just us being together this group of like-minded thinkers the vibration was one of just love and it was incredible I, like I said you had to be there it's just one of those things if you missed it I, I'm I'm sorry you missed it but it was an experience of a lifetime for me and for everybody else that was there it was the most beautiful thing I've ever witnessed with my two physical eyes two physical eyes it was magical to say the least breathtaking awe-inspiring I do not I do get it, but I don't get it. All the fear porn and the hype that was put out over it. I've also had a lot of you referencing, I don't know, another channel, another astrologer. I really don't know. I don't watch that channel. Uh, I'm not going to call any names out. Uh, you need to see this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, I don't really understand astrology. Like I said, I know alchemy and Alchemy is that circle that people call the Zodiac. That's an alchemical magic circle. And that I do know. <clears throat> I will address one thing because several of you brought it up. And a few of you in that group were referencing this other channel about the eclipse let me back this up. We'll just put it there. The eclipse being Apollo getting crowned. And that just didn't happen. Um, and I, this is not to call out the other channel. Let me put that number one. Because I don't know the channel, don't know the work. So not calling out any channels. I'm calling you out as to why if you've been watching this channel for a while you have not yet understood what I'm telling you uh, I was shocked really that you even had to ask so uh, you might find it necessary to do a little homework I encourage this <clears throat> we're to study to show ourselves approved, not to me, not to yourself, not to each other, but to the Creator Himself. Study to show yourself approved. Are you worthy? Apollo is the twin of Artemis. Uh, anytime you're talking twins, you're talking Gemini. You're talking Gemini. And we've been through this. I harp on Gemini all the time. And it's not, this has nothing to do with if you were born a Gemini. Because the Gemini we're dealing with is what I call upside down world. They have flipped the cross. The symbolism is all upside down. And you can just look at the symbolism itself and see what's going on. The upside down rainbow is the number one. Now, I will say this much about what else they've done to that rainbow. It's they've taken it from being a rainbow and they made it a flag, which is a flat, vertical, horizontal. Um, you, you lay somebody out, when somebody's laid out horizontal, that's a way of saying they're dead. Okay, it doesn't have the arc to it. They put it on a square flag. They they squared the half circle because that's what a rainbow is. It's a half circle. The other half you can't see because it's down here with us. You have the one in the sky and then it mirrors below. <clears throat> when you mirror the one in the sky to below, you get purple on top which is what we're supposed to have because our chakras, our purple chakras at the top. 
Now, because we're in upside down world and Apollo, which is, you get Castor and Pollux, is Artemis would be the feminine aspect and Apollo would be the male aspect. Uh, and you can associate Artemis and Apollo with Theseus and Dionysus, Cain and Abel, Remus and Romulus, Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, Jos each tribe of Israel got a house. That's a constellation, except for Levi, which is why um, they didn't get any property, and it's why the Hebrew zodiac only has 11 constellations, and they have a 22-letter alphabet, so it's 11-11. Uh, it, you, 11 one way and 11 the other to make up the 22 alphabet to match the zodiac. <clears throat> now, our language has 26 letters, so that's 1313 is why they're trying to bring Ophucus down. But that ain't going to fly because it breaks the alchemy. You break the circle when you've done that. <clears throat> so you cannot do that. You also cannot square this circle. You haven't hidden anything. You've corrupted something. You've turned phi, which is 1.618 golden ratio, the number of nature, the way things naturally grow, to pi, 3.14159, which is all man-made. It's a measurement system to measure the circle or to square the circle is what they use it for. To mimic, it's to mimic, to copy, to alter. Um, anyway, that's another video for another day. But you should have learned by now, whenever you're dealing with twins, uh, Apollo, you know, they want to say Apollo's a sun god. No, Apollo is in power when the sun is in his star, in his constellation. Uh, Horus is the sun god. No, uh, the sun is when the sun highlights something. Uh, it's like this is a big stage. And right now, the sun is in Pisces. So, that's the main show. That's the stage we're looking at right now. Everything that's playing out in the world is playing out on this Piscean stage. And then it's like, you go to commercial, and then we're going to move to the Aries stage. So, looking at the eclipse... <clears throat> Mercury here, which is Apollo. Here, he in uh, Pisces, Mercury's debilitated. He's retrograde. He's combust of the sun. There's no way Mercury, a.k.a. Apollo, is getting a crown. If anything, he's losing his crown. He's in the abyss. He's in the sign of religion and illusion. He's communication, navigation, anything the elite worship. This is like, to, when I look at this, this is like their worst nightmare. Because they're catching an eclipse in the house of Pisces, the age that we're in, on the mutable cross, which means change and transmutation. That's where it happens. It happens on the mutable cross. This is big change, big change for Mercury. Now, Venus, on the other side, she happens to be exalted in Pisces. That's the heart chakra. Both of these planets are under a feminine aspect in um, Pisces. So, Venus is going to be more Taurus-like than Libra-like, uh, channeling that feminine spirit, and Mercury as well, is going to be more Virgo-like than Gemini uh, with that feminine spirit, that feminine energy. Uh, but here, uh, Pisces is ruled by Jupiter. And so this is happening in Jupiter's house. That's what, that's what really is going down here. And Jupiter, again, is lower chakra when Venus and Mercury are in happening uh, 
offsetting that power there are upper chakra. Jupiter's expansion and empire. Jupiter and Mercury rule that mutable cross. So they face the biggest change anyway. Uh, even though Venus is exalted here, there's still going to be transmutation. Uh, but to what? To exaltation. The eclipse is going to amplify all of the energy that you see here. I want to switch this over. Y'all know me and my star lore. Because this is where you're going to learn everything. This program, Stellarium, it's free. There's no reason you shouldn't download it and go through all this yourself. Now, the reason I'm changing this over is because it does give you a different aspect. To me, this one is far, even though it has flaws, it is far more accurate than the Western as far as the images are concerned and where they're spaced. Uh, but you can clearly see, again, let me put up some names here, see if this will come up for me. Yes. Uh, when you're three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, this is the whale constellation in the Arabic, is Pisces. Uh, Cetus, down here, is Leviathan. It's not the whale that Jonah spent three days and three nights in. You know, and I mentioned this in one of my last videos as well. The 2017 eclipse, which this one mirrors, happened in fire in the house of the sun. Uh, in Leo. Now, this one's in water. The first one was in fixed fire. And uh, this one is in mutable water. Uh, you're going to get a lot more change coming off this than you will the first one. Because it was fixed. And again, when you're dealing with eclipses, you're dealing with the top of the pyramid. So, in Leo, uh, the, the top of the pyramid are celebrities, uh, government. The uh, uh, solar eclipse is always about uh, leadership, the government, the monarch, uh, the president, uh, uh, the prime minister. <clears throat> These are going to change, and they did. Uh, we had a drastic change in a real upheaval in government on the 2017 eclipse. And the entire media in the country and even the world was really in it, has been in an uproar ever since that. And this is no different here. And some of you were concerned about me talking about religious leaders being exposed. Well, they will. That's what this is. <clears throat> Again, this is, excuse me, <clears throat> this is the house of religion. So, the top of that pyramid are your religious leaders. And judgment starts at the pulpit. It always starts at the top. And then it, it works its way down. <clears throat> so, I don't know, you know, when I look at this and I have seen some of the different experiences that people had, I can see um, how some people got this retrograde Mercurian experience and some got this exalted Venus experience, which Venus, Mercury, and the comet were all very prevalent. <clears throat> now, I will say this about the comet being there, <clears throat> because like an eclipse is indigenous to where it occurred, which is America, the United States. Uh, a comet is for everyone that sees it, for every... and. And every, everybody on the planet can see this comet at one time or another, during the day or night, because of its aspect to where, especially during the eclipse, we got a good view of it. But a comet 
uh, always represents literally a huge change globally. It's not just for an, an indigenous area. So to add the eclipse to all of this was probably the biggest warning to add the comet to this, especially what they decided to name it. Now, I want to jump back to today real quick. Let's see if I can do this. We are at the 10 days out at the 18th. Well, let's just do it this way. As the sun starts to move out of this Piscean energy, we're going to get this... Uh, alignment between a retrograde mercury at debilitated no longer combust but conjunct and exalted venus which is your mercury is your intellect it's your communication uh, where venus <clears throat> excuse me venus is that heart chakra exalted and i tell you the experience we had was definitely an exalted Venus experience. But we have this final Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. Uh, and as you can see, in the Western, it appears to be in Taurus. But, like I said, this zodiac is much more accurate to where the constellations actually start and begin. So you can clearly see it is still in Aries again, which is cardinal fire. And this fire does one of two things. It either purifies you or burns you down to ashes. And you then have no choice but to be the phoenix that comes out of that ashes. Uh, Saturn still in that water of life in his own house of uh, a lot's been said about war where Mars and Saturn are conjunct when we had let me back it up because we had that Mars Saturn conjunction on the 10th right about there almost into the 11th, 10th <clears throat> into the 11th. Uh, that depends on what house it's in and who it's conjuncting. Uh, Mars can mean that when conjuncting any planet is bringing war to that because they consider Saturn and Mars both malefic. Uh, well, that depends on what side of the road you're driving on. That's an astrological term. But in alchemy, this is not true. Uh, Mars is a completely different being when under the control of the crown chakra. And he's not warlike. Uh, Mars is exalted in Capricorn that's ruled by Saturn in the feminine aspect. And Mars there, who rules Aries as the god of war, and rule Scorpio as the god of sexuality. Uh, has nothing to do with sexuality or wars when in Saturn's house. It's getting the job done. It's channeling that energy from that root chakra. Instead of it being fire and water, it's grounded in that earth. And it becomes exalted. And it becomes like a workhorse getting the job done. Uh, Aries, that's your will, your will, and it's determination, it's, it's finishing the race, it's running on empty, but you keep going anyway, you don't stop until you're finished, and that's what Mars in Saturn's house of Capricorn is, and likewise in Aquarius. <clears throat> not only in Saturn's house, but under Saturn's thumb with uh, that conjunction. Because you've got Saturn 
present in Saturn's house with Mars. And this is an air sign. So likewise, Mars again, not warlike. Sorry. No, different aspect. It's upper chakra. Uh, both Capricorn and Aquarius represent the crown chakra. So it's like Mars is channeling your higher self, your forever self, the crown chakra. So, no, I'm not seeing the war there either. Although, I know we're like living out Matthew 24. There'll be wars and rumors of war and famines and pestilence and earthquakes, but none of it's natural. None of the, the what we're witnessing is natural. Every bit of it is man-made. None of it is phi, 1.618. It's all pi, 3.14159. It's all fake. It's all put on. It's just a show. Uh, but let me back this up because we had this moon in this Uranus-Jupiter trifecta going on here. Uh, now... The moon and Jupiter both rule water. Uh, Jupiter rules fire and water, but the moon exclusively is water. Uh, in this house of fire. Now, Jupiter is going to do, because it's in the house of cardinal fire, it's going to roll out its fire energy, which is Sagittarius. And uh, But with the moon here, in conjunction with it, then it's you're going to get a bit of a, a water aspect uh, from Jupiter rather than fire here, almost putting the fire out. It's like the moon comes through and puts whatever fire was going on out, uh, which is not, in my opinion, it's not a good thing because it's like as they're getting ready to leave, uh, the pressure is on. Uh, the fire is just building and building and building. The closer Uranus, which is your conscious mind, and Jupiter, which is your desires, uh, closer and closer together. Uh, Jupiter is empire and expansion and religion and philosophy and ideology. It's also shamanism. Uh, there's a lot of good about Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter can be somewhat malefic when it comes to uh, his fire aspect, but can be very, uh, and ruling Pisces, Jupiter is the god of grace and mercy and forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness in Pisces can only be achieved uh, by what measure you forgive. If you can't forgive, then you can't get forgiveness. But it's a it's an age of mercy and grace. Because we're all blinded by this light. We're in an age of ignorance. I would have to say, Pisces, the abyss, if I had to give it one name, it would be the age of ignorance. Because we know nothing. <clears throat> you know, this all seems really complicated. And I'll probably make it overcomplicated because of the way my brain works, and especially in trying to explain it. But when you really get it, when it just clicks for you, this is so simple, a child could do it. It really is. When you stop looking at that circle as an astrology circle, and I'm not telling you astrology is wrong. All things come in threes. Uh, Western astrology, Eastern astrology, Oriental Occidental, Tropical Sidereal, whatever you want to call them, there's always a third, and this is it. Actually, this is the original. This one came first. The magic circle of alchemy came first. And it's between the two. And if you'll learn this, and the, it's about the symbology more than anything else. It's about the imagery 
from one zodiac, from one age, from one culture, from one aeon to another. And they each have something to teach us. Solar astrology has something to teach us. Lunar astrology has something to teach us. But alchemical astrology, it must be bounced off this. To me, it's like the witness. It's one of the witnesses is if it don't fit here, then it's wrong. It's like calling Apollo a sun god and he's getting crowned during an eclipse while he's retrograde, debilitated, and combust. That don't jive in alchemy. It has to fit all three for it to be correct. So to me, the alchemical circle in the sky sets the standard. It is the template. Once you learn it, you can take anything fits somewhere on that circle. And it can tell you whether that thing, that person, place, or thing is mutable, fixed, or cardinal. Whether it's earth, water, fire, or air. Whether it's a feminine aspect or a masculine aspect. Whether it's lower chakra or upper chakra. Whether it's spinning one way or retrograde the other. Which affects you internally. And, you know, I still can't get. It don't. It does not yet click for me how the other astrologies can't do that. They're so general in their prognostications um, that you can kind of make it fit. But alchemy is exact. And like I've said, I have searched and studied many, many things in my lifetime. Obsessed with it. Um. Uh, but I've never found anything that I could point to that and say, it's perfect. I have found no perfection in creation at all, ever. Everything runs in patterns and everything has a flaw. That's just the way nature works until I saw this circle. And then I understood the truth of it all, and that, no, uh, the circle is perfect, and the circle is designed to create perfection. The philosopher's stone to turn that lead crown of Saturn into gold. It's like we're, if, you're, if your third eye is closed, your Saturn is lead. If your third eye's open, you got your crown and your Saturn's gold. One of the subscribers that came to the Eclipse event was actually seeing people's crown chakras light up when the sun was blacked out. I thought that was quite incredible. I was not shocked uh, because to me... It was very much a crown chakra event, an upper chakra event because of that Venus exaltation. While Mercury is the intellect, it, your mind, your intellect was just out of it. No, no, uh, what do they call it? No horse in that race. So it was all about that heart chakra. Wow. Saturn's over in Aquarius with his thumb on that root chakra, him in the crown chakra, and the house of the king, the crown. So no, a lot of a lot of you lit up that crown chakra. And you have to go through the heart. That's explained to us over and over again in the Old and the New Testament. That's the gate you must go through. If you go any other way, Mercury Kundalini, then you're going through the back door. You're coming over the fence. You're not coming through the straight and narrow gate, which is through that heart chakra. And so to me, 
This eclipse was far greater than any expectation I could have ever had. The experience was nothing less than divine. That's the closest I can get to explaining it. Um, as a matter of a fact, everybody that was at the eclipse that came the next day uh, to the lecture that was not. Now, I had plans. I had eight hours to fill eight and I have no problem filling that eight hours. But from the minute I arrived there, my plans were gone. Because Spirit had other plans. And it was far greater than I could have ever imagined. Uh, because everybody got to share uh, what we experienced. And how we came to be where we are. And it was very emotional, it was very moving, it was very bonding, and we need to do that again. But me, I still have this eight hours worth of material in me I, I want to talk about, because there are things I just flat know I can't put on YouTube. I've had too many videos rejected by them that I, I can't even make it to publish, much less catch a copyright. It just don't fly because of different topics or wordings something I've said or put in the description and uh, they'll just shut it down and uh, I know they have a whole list of words they block and if they show up in your videos or in your comments or in your description box uh, then it's flagged and the whole video's flagged or, or your comments never seen I, I rarely even comment on anything anymore because most of my comments are censored by YouTube and it is what it is but this Uranus Jupiter conjunction again the purifying of the mind the the con your consciousness your desires uh, we're told to store up our treasures in heaven now to do that to store up your treasures in heaven because a treasure is something one desires Jupiter it has to, that's, that's one of its uh, key aspects, is it's a desire. You, you treasure it, you desire it. Uh, this is in the house of fire, again, in the house of purification. But uh, to store up your treasures in heaven is over here. It's in one of the three air signs, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. It's in the upper chakras. You put your treasures there. And in a way, that's like saying, uh, how Mars is under the control of Venus. Well, this is Mars. I'm at under the control of Saturn. Well, this is Mars's house that Jupiter's in. So that aspect is going to go there as well. The Mars energy is suppressed here uh, from its natural state because it's under the crown right now. It doesn't have a will of its own. So great timing, really. With the moon showing up, Mars under Saturn, um, it's not so fiery. It's like it's putting the fire out. It's putting the fire out. It's like water poured onto those ashes, which can make a muddy mess. Uh, but it, it is a good time, an opportunity, that's what you call it, an opportunity to... Get out of that fire and calmly, because fire can get hot and it can burn you, and that's going to uh, trigger that root chakra, which is your adrenal gland. It's your sexual glands and your adrenal gland is what Mars rules in the root chakra. And adrenaline kills the third eye. That's why you're, I'm telling you not to fear. Stay out of the fear porn. Uh, stay in the upper chakras because that root chakra and when it when you hit that adrenal gland or uh, have an orgasm with the sexual glands, you can stimulate them all you want. But once you have that orgasm, you've already expelled that life force energy that you're, you've built up. Uh, 
So you want to have the orgasm in the crown chakra, not the root chakra. So you want to channel that energy up. And after it leaves the root chakra, the next place it's going is to Jupiter, into your navel chakra, which is expansion, desires, empire, growth, religion, philosophy, ideology. And you want to purify that. But it can get too hot, which will kick that adrenal gland and kill it, but not while this conjunction over here is going on. To me, it is a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, now, a Mars-Saturn conjunction can be bad, especially if it happened in Aries's house. If this was flipped at, from the house of Saturn over here to the house of Mars, Saturn would be debilitated here, and all hell would break loose. Because now you're sitting on your crown. You've got your crown down here in, in your root chakra. So if that was flipped, yes, it would be terribly bad. But here, it's wonderfully good. Venus, wonderfully good. To me, Mercury retrograde debilitated combust. I couldn't be happier for a Mercury retrograde during an eclipse. And the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction, again, throw some water on that fire. Glad to see the moon come through because it helps. We need a breather. It's like giving it a breather. You take a break. The moon's not going to be there for long, but while it does, and while Saturn's got his thumb on Mars over here, it's like a go signal. Now's your time. Do it now. And do it with your heart because it's exalted. It's like all the players are in play right here. And the crazy thing about it is Neptune is here in Pisces as well. Through all of this. Which is the imagination. And you've got Pluto over here in Capricorn. Grounded. Been in Capricorn for a while, will be there for a while. But uh, the imagination is necessary for manifestation. And nowhere does manifestation occur as great as it does on the mutable cross. So all of this, all everything is about change. It's about transmutation. And now we've spent, how long has it been? Working on two decades now of them pushing this uh, trans agenda. But they want to transmute the outside of the body, the appearance, what you look like. When alchemy is about transmuting the inside. And that's what this is. This is transmuting the inside. To me, it was a great waking up of the heart. It had more to do with Venus than anything. Venus's power outranked everybody on the board when that eclipse happened. And it was incredible. And that energy is what needs to channel here. You go from excluding the sun and the moon because they were eclipsed. Once you leave Jupiter, you go to the heart chakra. Now, all of this energy is going to play out for quite a while until it plays out. They tell you to the next eclipse, uh, from one eclipse to another. But uh, everything has its initiation, uh, its peak, and then its declination. Its ascension and its declination. And... So, so, yeah, I, I see a big judgment on the church, a huge one, which it just now occurred to me what happened to Marmari Emmanuel, that bishop in Australia. I, I actually watch his channel. He's one of the few that I can tolerate because, to me, he comes from 100% place of love. He, he, he truly emulates what every Christian was taught to do. 
and it was to not fear and to love your enemy no matter what. Walk through that fire over here in Aries and come out and you don't even smell like smoke, which is kind of what's going on here with the moon, when the moon passed through at this auspicious time of the conjunction of the two. Uh, was it put the fire out? It washed that smoke smell away. Which is awesome to me. You know, you can look at anything in a dualistic perspective. But I have to pound into your heads and hearts and minds that we do not live in a duality. That is one of the lies of the many. Uh, all things in threes. You always have another choice. This is not a duality. They want to force that view on you. Uh, I'll put it to you this way. Take the elite. Who do they vote for? The left or the right? The reds or the blues? It doesn't matter to them. They're above that. Because they're playing both sides of the aisle. So it matters not to them, red or blue, because they're not stuck in duality. Now, me, I, I don't bother at all. I've registered to vote a few times because uh, it's one of the things you can use to get a post office box. And they require documentation. So that's one of the things they'll take is uh, voter registration. But I've never actually voted. Uh, give Caesar what is Caesar, but give God what is God. I don't choose any of the Caesars. I'm, I'm not concerned with them. Uh, to me, uh, the Bible tells us that God appoints the kings and the rulers of this world. So, does your vote really count? He knows our hearts and our minds. He knows our Venuses and our Mercuries. He knows our hearts and our minds. That's what's going on here. Heart, mind, consciousness and desire going down over here. It's all happening. And it, to me, it all looks fantastic or tenfastic. So I'm very, I was very pleased and very hopeful. But again, there, there, it is judgment and it is change and it is transmutation. And I think the biggest change that we're going to see is in the church. All of them. Because all of, this is more New Testament, but Pisces represents what I call the three Abrahamic faiths. You have uh, the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. It's going to affect all three. As a matter of fact, it's also going to affect India, uh, which is not part of the Abrahamic faith. Because Mercury, everything about India, Gemini, is Mercury. That, that was Mercury's great age of Gemini, and all the evidence and the symbology there tells us. Uh, we even know that one of the names of Mercury is Buddha. So, uh, yeah, judgment on uh, all religions. All religions. Mercury present. And to me, the more I'm learning here, I'm convinced now, I, I'm not leaning towards, I'm convinced uh, that one of the big lies is that Venus is who they today reference as Lucifer is actually Mercury. Or it's Mercury with a Venus mask on, like um, an iPad Go 2, where you see the little blue man, Mercury and Gemini, Ripping off one mask after another. And what all that emulates. And who all he's been impersonating. He's the great impersonator. Now that would be, th those used to be my favorite. Where like comedy was concerned. I loved uh, 
when an actor or a comedian or whatever, when they would mimic or impersonate other famous actors or people. Uh, I found that most hilarious. Uh, and today, the big thing, especially with the elite, are the female impersonators. But everything's bunched up right here. Nobody got left out between Capricorn and Aries. Let me pause here and see if there's anything else I want to add. I'm an hour into this and I, I still feel like I got a ways to go. I want to talk about what's going on over at Patreon right now because I'm sitting on a couple of uh, podcasts for Signs and Wonders that I've not yet uploaded. Uh, I'll get into that in just a second. I want to start with, I, I'm trying to work on that site and I literally had to post the first one on YouTube for free. The I'm having trouble with Vimeo. Uh, using that as a platform, I tried using YouTube as a platform, starting a Signs and Wonders on podcast, but when you start a channel off the bat, YouTube limits your videos to 15 minutes. I think we've all been through that nightmare. And these podcasts were already recorded, and they're an hour long, so I can't host them on YouTube. Um, I'm having trouble hosting on Vimeo. I need to find another platform that I can post the URL in Patreon to do this. And I'm working on it. I'm close to being finished with that. My real problem is a lot of you have already gone over there and signed up. And I haven't even gotten to the membership part yet. I haven't gotten to what kind of account I want to run. Patreon jumped the gun and just started selling $5 memberships. I had no intention of starting a $5 membership. They done this. Uh, they just started selling them, charging you, and uh, I wasn't ready, I, I wasn't ready for a hard launch yet. So I've got to go correct what they've done, and I'm not, I'm having trouble doing that. I wanted a tier list because I, I am aware not everybody can afford $5 a month. And some of you can afford more. So I wanted to offer a basic bottom basement to those who can't uh, afford $5 a month, which I, I would be in the category as one of those who could not, which was one of my fights with Vimeo. Because you sign up with Patreon, they want to take a percentage of everything you've got just to run a URL because they don't even host the videos. You have to find another platform to host the videos and they want to charge you too. And right now, I can't afford to buy one of those big packages from Vimeo. So I'm stuck with the limited, you can run 50 videos for free thing. And then I'm having trouble launching that. It has really become almost a nightmare. But I don't stress myself with it. Because I know that it'll fall into place exactly when it's supposed to. But it is happening. And the videos are already made. Ollie Bobby's left for Colorado and won't be back for several months. There might be a visit here and there. And we might do some uh, podcast by Zoom, but I will continue to do them and record them, and I've had a lot of visitors after the eclipse. A lot of you came to my home from the event, and uh, a lot of you have made arrangements to come visit me, and as they do, I will also introduce them to you on the podcast, so everybody can get to know everybody a little bit better. That's what makes us a family. We're kind of a little family. 
that's what it felt like up on that mountain. And even, excuse me, I'm getting hiccups. And even the next day, uh, we all met as strangers. And within 48 hours, we left his family. And I have contacts. And I've met people I know that will be a part of my life for the rest of my life. And that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, ironic thing, ironically enough, we had people come from the north, south, east, and west. Uh, we had several states represented, uh, some from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Virginia. Uh, they were from everywhere. It was quite incredible. And I was quite shocked, actually, but very, very pleased. And like myself, many of you brought your pets. And I'm really concerned about the next time we gather, because it will be late September, but it's generally still pretty hot here. No, early September, end of August, end of September. The dates are going to be August 31st. September 1st and 2nd. Those are the three days I'm targeting if you'd start, if you'd like to start looking at your calendars. But don't make anything. It's not set in stone yet, but when it is, which should be, I would hope in the next 10 days, I'll know for sure all the logistics and we'll go from there. But, uh, yeah, I think we lost our deposit on the last one for the dogs, which I'm not shocked, uh, and that's okay. Uh, we'll just make the best of it. We lived through it, and I wish we had a t-shirt for it. I have my spiritual t-shirt for it anyway. It's a day I will always remember, and it will never, like opening your third eye, that's just a memory that will never, ever fade. You can just think about it and you're right back there in that spot. The eclipse was like that for me. Especially when I started seeing what I call the waves. I thought I, like I said, I actually thought I was hallucinating at first. Till no, I wasn't the only one seeing it. And it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It was to watch when everything just went black. And you could see the corona of the sun. You could see the stars and the comet and the blue waves all over the ground. Like we were standing in, in an ocean of light. And I think I found that most fascinating. Every, everybody's energy around us was all heart chakra. Even the other people that were there not in our group which there weren't many, but it was an exceptional experience. And I won't, I won't keep harping on it because you're never going to get it. You had to be there. I'm sorry, those of you that weren't able to make it. A few of you had to cancel your plans because of uh, family situations. And um, I'm, I'm keeping you all in, in my, and I hate the word prayers, in my intercession time and my grateful time all right what else do i want to cover here i've got so much i should have kept notes this week because so much has crossed my mind but i've been so so busy and uh, but now everything's calming down this is actually the first time i've been alone by myself here, that it's just me and Kelly, uh, other than, you know, uh, Ollie Bobby's been here since September, Isha was here from last June, and then I've had others of you that just uh, stop by when you're passing through for a day or two, which is great to me, but this is the first time I've really been here by myself uh, since last June. So, huge energy shift happening to me right now as well. Kelly is way calmed down. She feeds off other people's energy. 
So when there's guests in the house, she gets pumped. And the girl has just laid down and went to sleep. And that's all she's done for the past two days. Is just literally, she gets up and eats and does her thing outside. And then she'll look at me and just lay down and go to sleep. Which is good for her right now. She needs to rest. She can get too excited about things. But I love her bunches. Uh, I'll, uh, I got one of my subscribers coming this weekend that done the recordings for the gathering the day after the eclipse. And I'm going to see if I can get some of that footage. And again, those of you that took pictures that hadn't sent them to me yet, please do of both days because I'm going to put together a little slideshow to share with everybody. And I would just like to have it in for my memories, for my keepsakes. Uh, those are treasures I've stored in my heart. All right, people, you know what to do. Commit that random act of kindness. Uh, don't pull the trigger on Patreon yet. Hold on. Don't any more join yet. Everybody else, you're good. I'm going to get this worked out this week. I got a lot of stuff off my to-do list, so I am will have more time to devote to this. And don't pull the trigger on Labor Day weekend yet. But I want to give you as much notice as possible so you can start doing a little homework, but don't make any reservations just yet. And I'll, I'll let you know that within, I would say, by the 1st of May. All of that should be ironed out. I love you bunches. Commit that random, random act of kindness and bank that karma. You have no idea how important it is because when you a true act of kindness comes from that heart chakra, no better time to do it than Venus and Pisces. And you're storing up your treasures in heaven there. And love that heart chakra covers a multitude of sins. All right, people, I'd like to thank those that donate to this channel, which are few and far in between, uh, but I appreciate you more than you could know, and if you haven't before, please consider becoming a sponsor or donating. Uh, this is different than Patreon. Patreon, um, those funds will be exclusive to get the Alchemical Tarot deck launched. All right, people. Love you bunches. Stay up. Stay in that heart chakra. It is exalted.